In this next video, I'm going to go over the engine checks I perform every day before we head out on the next leg of our journeys. All right, first off, we're going to make sure we have our tools with us. And open up the hatch. What's nice about these checks is that you can do it with the air conditioner running. So it's nice and cool in here right now. It's good to have a flashlight handy. Let's get down. First thing I'm going to be looking for is to make sure we don't have any water. Um, I expect a, a little bit of water in the center of the bilge. We get that even when we wash the boat on the side, it comes in through the vents. So every once in a while, I'll shop vac that water out down there in the bilge. It just settles at the low point in a couple spots near the bilges where the bilge pump can't get it out because it's too low. You know, we'll look for any uh, signs of fluid leaks out of the engine, um, water or oil, anything out of the ordinary. Let me get little drips here and there. The oil just sweats out of seals. You know, the boat is, uh, what, six, 16, eight, eight, 17 years old. So you're gonna get some leaks out of rear main seals, things like that. I check around the uh, shaft seals, make sure we don't have any water leaking in, in there. Again, you'll have some drips back there, but uh, you don't want to see water constantly dripping in. Okay, so we, we look good there. Nothing out of the ordinary. I check the tension on the belts, make sure the belts are in good shape. I check the fluid on the antifreeze reservoir. Make sure we're good there on both engines. Check the belts over here. Let's see, I checked the fluids on the engine, the engine oil and the uh, transmission fluid. So let me check that here. With my handy dandy rag. want to make sure the oil is in the okay range at the high I prefer the high end of the okay range I don't know if you can see that but we are at the higher end of the okay range for that one Here we are, yeah, it was at the okay range. Maybe you saw it better than I did. My eyes aren't as good as they once were. All right, the oil is easy enough to check. Um, back over here, hope you can see that. That is the dipstick for the transmission. So not too hard to get to. Now, transmission should be checked after it's been running um, because the oil drains out of the cooler so it, it could give you a false reading but when the engine's cold I typically look for the oil to be at the top of the full mark like out past it I would say like this this is right past where it says full so that one is okay because what happens when you check the transmission, um, if it's cold and been sitting all night, the oil drains out of the, the cooler, which is up here, the oil cooler, and it drains down into the transmission. So, uh, you know, that's not the true oil level because you need more oil than that. So I just put more than it says on the dipstick when it's, when it's cold. above the full hot side, so that's good too. All right, 
so that's all the fluids checked for the engines. I will periodically check the oil also in the generator. I don't run the generator too often. We have the through hole strainers here. I want to check those, make sure they are clean. I cleaned them out uh, I don't know, a few days ago after we went through the dismal swamp. And I could see through the glass here. I don't know if you could see it, but um, I could see that one is clear. This one here, it's a little hard to see. The glass is cloudy. I need to clean it. But that one looks good too. We put the light behind it. I could see through the holes in the screen. So you don't have to open it up and take it out necessarily every time. So I just checked for those. Uh, if you needed to clean those out, you open up the wing nuts here, flip this cover over, pull the screen out, and rinse it out with a hose. I think I showed that in another video. Um, make sure when, before you do that, you close the through hull. Otherwise, you'll have seawater flowing into the boat. Um, don't forget to reopen the valve after you put the cover on and seal everything down and make sure you check for leaks Make sure uh, you get any air bubbles out of here um, Just bleed bleed the water through just so you don't have an airlock and you start the motor and It has sometimes could have trouble pumping up um, the, the raw water for cooling um, So that's pretty much it uh, the air conditioned strainer also is something I need to check. It's very similar to the engine strainer. That's back there. You can hear it running right now, but it's it's just a little smaller than the engine strainer. So that needs to be checked periodically. And now that I'm looking at it, I see a couple drips of water coming out of it. It looks like the cover may not be closed all the way, so I'll have to check that. All right, those are the basic checks. Um, you know, I look around the engine, make sure you don't have any water leaks after uh, it's been running a lot this the motor is getting more hours on it in uh, a few days than sometimes I put on it for an entire season so uh, you know we're putting a lot of time on it and uh, oh what else oh also the um, I'm not gonna do that now but over here on each engine there's a fuel filter very easy to get to so I've already changed this one once, thinking that might have been, might have been the problem. But keep spares of your fuel filters on when you're doing long trips like this, because if you get contaminated fuel that blocks the fuel filter, um, you could run into problems. But to change, to check the fuel filter, it's a water separating filter. There's three screws here. This whole cartridge comes out, and then you can pull the actual filter element out. There's also a filter disc down there that's a pre-filter. So um, I check those. If those are dirty, I'll change those also. Um, you pour out any of the uh, fuel in the cup, check to see if there's any water in it. And there's one on the other engine, which is a lot harder to get to than this one because it's way on the back side. Over there. So I gotta crawl in here next to the toilet pump. Over there. Okay, another item I wanna check because I haven't checked it in a while and it was an issue in the past, was the, the bolts on the coupler for the shaft going to the transmission was loose at, a, at one point in the past. So it's been several months since I checked that, but with this amount of use, I wanna get in there and just make sure that those bolts didn't come loose. Now this is a little tough to get to, and I hope you can hear me because the battery charge is running in the background. But that is the shaft coupler. I'm gonna try to set up my best here. And hopefully you can see the bolts. There's four bolts. It's just a, a nut and bolt combination. I just wanna get a wrench on that and make sure I can't spin them. Just give them a little snug. Um, if they are loose, I'm going to have to get two wrenches in there and um, tighten that up. But you don't want those to come loose because that could be a problem. You could uh, break your shaft or break your transmission or uh, very unlikely, but your shaft could fall off. So. 
check four bolts on each shaft. There's two shafts because it's a twin engine bolt. Did I get the right size? Nope, I got the wrong size. Okay. Now if these are tight, when I tighten them, it should spin the shaft. See? Spin the shaft. The shaft spins nice and freely. That's good. That's good. So they all seem nice and tight. Okay. That's good. Okay, that's not, it's just the shaft spinning. The nuts are tight. That's good. Okay, they're all good. One thing I noticed is that this engine's a little harder to spin the shaft like that than the other one, so it could be a little misaligned. I don't have any other engine uh, issue with the engine. Actually, this is the one that runs a little warmer. So I wonder if that has anything to do with it. But all right. And that's that. So we are looking good for our next run. Alright, got any questions? Leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching.